What's up, party people? So there's been a ton of zombie map rank rankings go around recently. So I wanted to throw my two cents into the basket there. So the way I base my rankings is I used 26 different categories and gave each map points for those corresponding categories. Um, I use things like creativity, innovation, RNG dependent, how easy pack a punch is, how to get set up. Um, those were some of the categories. I'll show the categories here on screen um, that I use to rank each map. Um, However, this is still a personal opinion because I decided we, how many points to give each map on those categories. Um, but I feel like it's a step in the right direction to you know, make this a statistical analysis or a mathematical decision on which maps are the best map. Um, so let's get into it. Coming in at our 28th spot is Die Rise. Now Die Rise is only redeeming qualities are the Sliquifier and the Skybox. And the Sliquifier is probably one of the best wonder weapons we've seen. Unfortunately, it had to be put on Die Rise. Um, on any other map, it would have been so much fun and great addition to that map. Die Rise is awful because of all the RNG. It has terrible flow. You have to wait for elevators over and over again. The setup of the map with the two buildings is just not fun to, to play zombies in. Uh, you usually set end up in the the big open room to train and and that's about the only place you play in the map if you're going for high rounds or just messing around on the map um overall not a fun map to play um it just a lot of waiting and it just kills the flow of zombies um i wouldn't be waiting at an elevator during a zombie apocalypse and that's why it comes in at our last spot now coming up next at our 27th spot is green run or transit now, transit is often the meme of the zombie, the zombie community, but I think that it has, well, it doesn't have any redeemable qualities because it's transit. There's fog, there's denizens. The map is so far spread apart that it's impossible to get set up. If you go down and lose your perks, it's, it's almost impossible to get going again. Um, you have the teleportation that is just random and is not reliable. You can't tra traverse the map very well unless you stay on the bus the whole time. And even then, that takes forever. Um, Pack-a-punch is really hard to get turned on. You have to build it even. Um, and even power is difficult to turn on. Um, so I think overall transit is a terrible map and so I gave it a grade of F. Coming in at our 26th spot is Nocturne Toten. Now Nocturne Toten is the first Call of Duty Zombies map and so I think for that it's got some nostalgia to it and people really you know put this higher on the list but I think this deserves a lower spot because um, looking back and, and comparing it to all the maps it's not you know it's not the funnest map is it replayable oh yeah you can play that map over and over and over again um, but that's about it you know you can just go for high rounds or just mess around um, it doesn't have more content to it um, but for its time it was very innovative it was you know obviously the first map and so it had the best wonder weapon uh, the introduction of the ray gun on there um, that would forever become you know one of the best wonder weapons we've ever seen in call of duty and for that reason um, it's a little higher on the list but again and it's at our 26th spot. So coming in at 25 is Classified. Classified is a remake, and it was the bonus map um, for the season pass of Black Ops 4. It's a remaster of 5 from Black Ops 1, and for that reason, it doesn't, have a, it doesn't score very well because it doesn't have that originality or that creativity um, that the other maps have so far. Um, it does... You know, improve the wonder weapon quite a bit. Uh, the Winter's Howl is actually uh, usable on classified, and the storyline that we get, or the story details from the radios and the wisps and all that, is is really cool. If you haven't uh, checked those out, you should because it really ties into a lot of what we don't know about the Ether storyline. Um, but other than that, it really doesn't tie into gameplay. The Easter egg on the map is going to round 150, and that's it. Um, it's not a really a fun map it's it is replayable um, but overall it's just a remake um, and that's why it comes in at our number 25. now coming in at 24 is the map 5. 
Now this is not much better than its remake counterpart, but it was a, an original map. It was creative and it was such a, a cool concept of having, you know, the president of the United States and a couple of the world leaders in the Pentagon locked in with the zombie apocalypse. Super cool uh, setup, super cool storyline, um, but didn't really uh, do other than that, that that we knew of for many years. Um, and so the Wonder Weapon was terrible. It, it was not good. Um, so for this reason, it's going to be ranked at our number 24 spot. So coming in at 23 is The Giant. Now, The Giant is the remake of Doris, um, which was a classic. And so The Giant was a lot of fun. It's very replayable. Um, the setup is super easy. It's a lot of fun to go and sit on the catwalk or train. Um, it's a really fun map. Black Ops 3 remastered it. Um, that was the bonus map for getting the season pass. Um, but there wasn't much added to it. It was just a copy and paste. Uh, you did have the Annihilator, so you had some unique weaponry on there. Uh, but other than that, it was just a, a normal map. Um, it was just a fun little bonus map that we got. Um, and for that reason, it comes in at our number 23. Now coming in at number 22 is Nuketown. Uh, Nuketown was a fun little bonus map of, of Black Ops 2. Uh, it really was all that was. It was, you know, the reimagined of the multiplayer map um, in zombies form. Uh, it was really interesting with the perk system. The perks would fly down from the sky after every 100 zombie kills, uh, including Pack-A-Punch. And so that added some variety to the map, but it could be difficult because the last perk you got was sometimes uh, Jug, and that would make the map very difficult. The map is very replayable. It's a lot of fun, um, but overall it's, it's nothing more than that. Um, so Nuketown is going to be coming in at, at number 22. So coming in at 21 is Dur Reese. Uh, this was one of the original maps on World of War. And this was a fan favorite, a classic. Um, you, I'm sure you all sat up on the catwalk with your buddies with the PPSH and the Wonder Waff and just camped for, for days. Um, this map does... It doesn't really offer much more than that. Um, it was introduced with Pack-A-Punch and Pack-A-Punch was... Um, a, a little kind of a Easter egg to unlock where you had to link the teleporters together. Um, so not too difficult to get set up on this map. And overall, really fun map, really play, replayable, um, but really didn't introduce anything new or, or innovative. Um, and so that's why it comes in at our number 21 spot. Coming in at number 20 is Revelations. Um, I was really surprised about this ranking because I really enjoy Revelations. I mean, it is a, a fan service map with all the remasters in it. Um, it really doesn't have much original map other than, you know, inside the Apothecan and um, the, the spawn room. Everything else is taken from other maps, but um, it was a lot of fun when it came out. The Easter egg is a ball. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense, the steps, but it's a really fun map. Um, Revelations doesn't really introduce um, any new wonder weapons or perks or anything. Um, they reused the Thunder Gun and the Apothecan Servant, which were, you know, two of the best wonder weapons ever. Um, but for this reason, it's ranked a little bit lower just because of, you know, it's not really original. It was just kind of a mash together of all the, the different maps. Um, and so that's why it comes in at our number 20 spot. So coming in at 19 is Shinonuma. Now, this was one of the first maps introduced on World at War, and it introduced us to the Wonder Waff. Uh, the first wonder weapon in zombies other than the ray gun, and this has become a classic weapon. It was so strong and so powerful, you could get to very high rounds with it, um, and it was a lot of fun. This map also introduced dogs or, you know, a special zombies type. Uh, this map was very innovative, and it was also the start of a lot of the storyline that we know and love today. Um, it introduced... Richtofen had his office there. Um, we had moving, or I'd say moving perks for the first time um, that could randomize in different locations. And overall, just a great map. It introduced some traps to us, the flogger and some other things like that. Um, overall, just a great map. Um, and that's why it comes in at our number 19th spot. So coming in at 18 is Verrucked. Now, Verrucked is probably one of the scariest maps. Um, it has a great setting, an old insane asylum or mental ward. Um, very creepy, lots of scary noises, scary music. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, it is a really fun map. It introduced super sprinters that were crazy fast, or Verrucked sprinters, and they would not let you get out of their sight. Um, a very intense map, very close quarters. 
um, and very replayable. Uh, the introduction of player spawns in different locations, so two different spawn rooms, um, and you had to turn the power to get back together. A great innovation, great design, and a lot of fun to put in your mind in that you know aura of the zombies and um, that that fear of being separated and all these zombies coming into this mental uh, hospital or sane asylum. Um, absolutely just incredible map. Um, and it comes in at our number 18th spot. So coming in at 17 is Blood of the Dead. Blood of the Dead is a remake uh, or a remaster of Mob of the Dead from BO2. Um, so these feature the Ether storyline characters uh, within Alcatraz. Super great setting. It's very creepy. It's very scary to be in Alcatraz. Um, but, but though it's a because it's a remaster, we don't see anything really new introduced other than the Magma Gat, which is just more of a variant of the Blunder Gat. Um, we get to see more of the Ether storyline and the development of of how they're going to eventually break the cycle, uh, which will be really important. And, you know, that just adds more value to Mob of the Dead and to the whole cycle of zombies. Um, but this map is really a, a good time. It's very replayable. The Easter egg is a lot of fun, um, helping the ghosts inside the prison cell and, you know, giving them the different things that they need integrates with the story of of Alcatraz very well and of the Ether storyline. Uh, character quotes throughout the whole map are very influential, uh, very eye-opening, and it's a really just a good time to play this map. Overall, it's a solid map, but because of the remaster and some other things, it's going to be placed a little bit lower um, at our number 17 spot. So coming in at 16 is Kino Drutoten. And this classic fan favor map is something that people will always remember playing on. This was the first map that I played on in Zombies. This map introduced us to the Wonder Weapon, um, the Thunder Gun, one of the best Wonder Weapons that we've had in Zombies. It is a really fun map. It flows well. The power is easy to turn on. It's easy to get set up, easy to go to power or to pack a punch. Um, and it's just a really fun map. Uh, not much storyline, not much Easter egg on there. Uh, the traversal is really easy. Perks are easy to get to. Um, overall, it's a really fun and easy map, um, but it doesn't really offer more than just, you know, playing around. And so that's going to be why it's ranked at a number 16th. So coming in at 15 is Ascension. Now Ascension was the first map that we saw in Easter Egg On, an official quest line, you could say. Uh, this map was uh, very influential into the storyline. It tied into five, it tied into a bunch of other things that we saw um, in the future and also with the maps that were out at the current time. Um, it was a really, innovative map where we first see a traversal system as the lunar landers we see um the thunder gun again on that map which you know no one was complaining about it was a really fun map the perks were easy to get it was easy to set up it had the black and white at the very beginning which was so innovative and then after you turn the power the color comes in and that was a really cool feature the launching of the rocket was astounding to have one of these dynamic events within a zombie map um, so overall a, a solid map and it comes in at 15. Now coming in at 14 is Call of the Dead. Uh, Call of the Dead featured a celebrity cast playing as themselves in the map. Uh, the map was centered around George Romero filming a movie um, in Siberia on this shipwreck freighter and then zombie outbreak happens. Um, and it, an incredible, incredible map and a zombie fan experience where George Romero uh, was on the map, one of the original founders of horror and zombie movies, um, and it, it was a solid map, a great Easter egg, uh, a lot of fun to play with the celebrity cast. It introduced zip lines, it introduced um, two uh, uh, wonder weapons. The first is the VR 11, uh, which would transform zombies back into humans, acting like a, a, a monkey bomb almost. And then it also introduced the Scavenger, which would be, is a bold action sniper rifle, um, the only sniper rifle wonder weapon that we ever have. Um, and so overall, just a great map. Um, George Romero was on the map himself as a boss zombie, you could say, um, going around the map and, and being angry if you hit him. Um, overall, just a, a great experience, a great fan map, and a really 
interesting setting. And so overall, this is a fun map and it comes in at our number 14th spot. So coming in at 13 is Dead of the Night from Black Ops 4. Now this is a really unpopular opinion. I feel like a lot most people uh, don't enjoy this map, but this is one of my favorite maps personally. Um, the originality, the creativity on this map are, are superb. Um, it introduced Alistair's Folly, which I think is the best wonder weapon of Black Ops 4. A really fun map with the, the layout, the theme of being stuck in this mansion with werewolves and vampires, really tapping into some of that lore um, that we are getting with this new chaos storyline. Um, this is a really interesting map. The Pack-a-Punch is not very easy to get to, um, where you have to do three quest lines basically to be able to get to Pack-a-Punch. Um, but the power is easy to turn on. Um, the, the weapons are very fun to use on the map. And overall, I think this is a really solid map. Uh, the spawn rates of the buildables are immense and very elaborate. Um, but after that, the, just the Easter egg and everything that fits into the lore and the character development, I think it's a solid map that really just comes together in the end. And that's why it's going to come in at our, thir our 13th spot. So coming in at 12 is Voyage of Despair. Now I think this is also a very unpopular opinion. I think most people think this is the worst map of Call of Duty Zombies, at least of Black Ops 4. But I really love this map. I think this map is, is very difficult, uh, very close quarters, which you know is reminiscent of the first Call of Duty maps like Nocturne Toten and some of those first World of War maps. Um, the, the Wonder Weapon is a, an amazing Wonder Weapon, having three cannons um, in a gun, shooting explosives, a really fun Wonder Weapon. The Easter Egg is full of lore, full of um, amazing storyline, and all the steps fall into place with the character development and what we learn more about the storyline of, of Chaos storyline. I think um, power is pretty easy to, to turn on. The setup is a little bit more difficult with Pack-a-Punch um, doing the four altars, but a lot easier than, than Dead of the Night. Um, overall, this map is a lot of fun. The Easter egg is a great time. The boss fight is one of the hardest and longest boss fights that we've seen, um, at least in, in, Call, in Black Ops 4. Um, a great map to play. It's very replayable, um, and that's why it's going to come in at our number 12th spot. So number 11 is Buried. Buried was the first introduction of a super easter egg of completing the other transit crew maps uh, and doing the nav card tables. You could be able to do a super easter egg. Um, this easter egg featured um, two sides and was a really cool introduction into Call of Duty Zombies. Um, Buried has a really cool equipment with the time bomb, um, being able to go back in rounds but keep perks and, and things that you had um, at the time that you went back in time. A really cool safe feature for going to high rounds or just playing around. Um, it had a really cool wonder weapon with the paralyzer, um, pretty much infinite ammo and you could just sit on top of the roof. Um, forever on that map. Um, pretty fairly easy map, easy to get to pack a punch, easy to get set up, and overall just a great map but with that super easter egg and the easter egg steps themselves. A really fun easter egg, really uh, well thought out map and a great setting. And that's why it comes in at number 11. So number 10 is Zetsubo no Shima. Now Zetsubo no Shima has some heavy implications on the storyline. Um, it features Takio uh, meeting with a, a previous self and, and taking his soul uh, very deep. One of the best cutscenes that we've had in, in Call of Duty Zombies. Um, a really, really fun map. Very innovative. It introduced a lot of different game mechanics. Um, it was really a, a test platform for, for Call of Duty Zombies um, to introduce some new me game mechanics. We had plants, we had different power setups, we had buckets gathering water. A uh, really, really fun map, uh, really cool map. It was tedious and very uh, frustrating at times, but I think what we gained from that map was um, very influential in the future of what we have now. Um, the Wonder Weapon is similar to the Slick Will Fire, but still it's a, a great Wonder Weapon, the KT-4 and the Master Mune upgrade. Um, I think that the Easter Egg is, is really fun. I think it's very heavy on RNG, but 
overall, I think it, it ties into the story very well. It has very good game mechanics. Um, it's a very colorful and bright map. It's got so much vibrance to it. We're in this green lush, you know, place with all these colors and bulbs and spiders. I think overall, uh, just a really solid map that we gained a lot from. Um, and that's why it comes in at our number 10th spot. So coming at nine is Moon. Moon is such a great map. We saw that remastered in Zombies Chronicles. Um, one of those maps that is very difficult, very fun. Uh, the Easter egg is heavy on RNG. It's almost all RNG getting the right um, excavator, getting the right weapons and equipment at the right time. Um, but we saw the QED. We saw the um, Gersh device again. We saw um, the Wave Gun, which is personally one of my favorite wonder weapons. Um, and Moon is just a, a solid map with a solid Easter egg. Uh, it was the conclusion of Black Ops 1 and with that ending of the earth blowing up, uh, what a great cliffhanger, what a great place to be at to, to lead into Black Ops 2 into that new storyline. Um, Moon is a, a lot of fun, a really vibrant map with some great coloring, um, especially in the remaster and Zombies Chronicles. Um, it's a really, really fun, East, really fun Easter egg and map um, overall, and that's why it comes in at our number nine. So number eight is going to be Shangri-La. Shangri-La is a very bright and colorful map. It features a daytime, but also in eclipse mode, which was unique to zombies to having a different time phase or timeline uh, at the same time in, the, in one map. Uh, featured NPCs guiding the Easter egg with Brock and Gary through the radios of so following their steps in Shangri-La and, and figuring out the Easter egg that way. Um, it introdu introduced the Baby Maker, which was a fantastic wonder weapon of being able to miniaturize zombies and kick them around. Um, really fun, lighthearted map that really just brought um, a good, enjoyable time to zombies. Uh, it was a unique experience of being in the sun it's not that creepy vibe that we got in zombies but at the same time with the the flame zombies and the screamers a very uh terrifying experience in the jungle being chased by these zombies and monkeys um overall a great map had great flow you could traverse it very quickly get to wherever you need to go within seconds um, and overall, just a, a great map. And that's why it comes in at number eight. So coming to number seven is Shadows of Evil, the on-disc map for Black Ops 3 that introduced a new cameos of a celebrity cast and a new storyline that um, was going to be something great. Uh, with the cameo of Rick Dauphin, we knew that it played into the Ether storyline. Um, and that was an exciting thing for, for many of us fans. I uh, introduced the, one of the greatest... Uh, the greatest wonder weapon of all time, the Apothecan Servant. Um, and shooting a black hole on the map and sucking everything in was absolutely incredible. Um, the introduction of new traps and a uh, new perk with Widow's Wine. Overall, just a solid map. Uh, a great start to Black Ops 3 um, with that new season of content. Um, <clears throat> the map featured... Uh, an Easter egg that was very unique to what we had been used to. Um, it featured um, a boss fight, uh, which was a, a really fun time being able to shoot the Shadow Man and trapping him in the summoning key. It had huge uh, apothegans on it and being able to transform into to the beast form. Um, very innovative, very unique map. Um, overall, a great experience. Um, other than Pack-A-Punch, Pack-A-Punch was really difficult to open up and is a lengthy process. Um, so replayability is a little bit lower on that side because it takes a while to get set up. Um, but once you get set up, it's a really fun map. Great flow, great traversal of the map, um, and a great vibe with it, with that, uh, that city feel. Um, and that's why it comes in at our number seven. Coming in at number six is Garad Krovi. Now, Garad Krovi is a, a great original map. It has a great feel to it, a great theme. Um, the location is, is unmarketed. Um, it is a very gritty, very raw map that feels very dark and very um, almost like you're in a hurry to survive these zombies, like it's your last stand. Um, the introduction of the... Raygun Mark III, the first time we had seen a ray gun since the Black Ops 2. Uh, really fun to, to have that new weapon with the dual wield. Uh, very similar to a ray gun and, and then a Pothkin Servant kind of combo there. Um, 
and introduced dragon traversal system to get to pack a punch a very unique very different thing that we had been used to in zombies um, but it made for the time to be very fun um, it was really nice to have that break while you ride the zombie over to to pack a punch um, though pack a punch did take a second to get you had to kind of open up the main map to be able to to put the cylinders in and call in the graph mo graph modules defend those um, and you could get to pack a punch um, but the special equipment with the Dragon Strike, a really cool feature to be able to have. Um, and just overall, just a really solid map that introduced some really cool features and had a really good flow um, to the map. And that's why it comes in at our number six. Just coming in at number five is the map nine from Black Ops 4. This map features the new Chaos crew being sent back in time through an Oracle vision to be able to unlock some mysteries and secrets needed to progress further in their quest to unearth the cult and be able to take and save Scarlet's father. This map features very sunny and bright setting um, with being able to stand in the arena with the opening sequence of coming out of the tunnel and coming into this bright arena with the crowd cheering for you. Um, very amazing feeling being able to come out and, and feel that way in a zombies map. Uh, the map features a very good layout with all the um, god temples being right off the central location easy to get to easy to access perks and find the box very quickly um, it's very easy to get set up on this map pack a punch does take a hot second to be able to defeat the champions um, but a very amazing and integrative um, system to be able to get pack a punch open where you're playing your and it's not really breaking the flow you're not having to do anything unique other than just defeat some boss zombies um, the map features the Sir Cat's Kiss, which is a great wonder weapon of having a scorpion attached to your arm shooting a, a beams of energy out. Um, the map features one of the best shields that we've seen with um, the gladiatorial sword and shield and being able to melee um, those zombies easier. Um, the map features a lot of enemies and uh, enemy types. Uh, very, very fitting of the map, uh, very reminiscent of those gladiatorial times. And it has a great flow. Pack-a-Punch is, is, is great. The camo is an amazing thing um, on this map. And overall, just a very solid, solid map that is very high on my ranking personally. And that's why it comes in at our number five spot. It's so coming in at number four is Mob of the Dead. Now, this is kind of an unpopular opinion. And I think most people would rank this higher up, at least in the top two. But on this list, it's going to be number four. And Mob of the Dead is a, a great map. It has a great feel to it, a great vibe. It's definitely the creepiest map that we have in zombies, being trapped in Alcatraz uh, with all these prison zombies and this warden who has it out for you. Um, it's got the introduction of the Blundergat, which is a, such a fun shotgun-based wonder weapon um, something that we haven't typically seen in in zombies um, it's got the spear mode or the afterlife mode being able to leave your body and go into this ghost mode to be able to interact with the map in new ways and be able to unlock new places um, and be able to progress the storyline um, the pack a punch is uh, not very easy to get especially on co-op where you can't hold more than one per one part at a time to build the plane um, solo, it's a lot easier um, to be able to build a plane holding up all those five parts at one time. Um, being able to go to the Golden Gate Bridge to pack a punch is a really cool thing and really uh, makes it real because it's a real place that, that we know of, um, that many of us have been to to visit. Uh, Alcatraz is a great layout. It features some great um, parts of the map to be able to use different traps such as the acid trap or um, the uh, turbine it's honestly one of the best maps that I've ever played and I really enjoy it I think it's one of my my favorite maps personally um, the storyline ties in so much more now with um, the conclusion of Black Ops 3 and, and halfway through Black Ops 4 we know that Mob of the Dead is is really the key part of this whole uh, storyline this whole cycle that we've been in uh, since Revelations and so I think Blood of the Dead or Mob of the Dead, sorry, um, is a great map and and features very unique things, very innovative things. And that is why it is at number four. Coming in at number three is Dur Ryzen Drac. Personally, my favorite map of all time of zombies. Um, this map is such a, a very fun experience with the four unique bows um, and the ammo types. Uh, it creates a very 
fun feel for the map though you're in this castle that's snowy and very bright uh, having these bows that are very colorful and unique to themselves is it makes for a very fun time traversal system is very easy to get around the map of different drop downs and teleport pads uh, or launch pads has the rocket going off um, being able to have a complete kill off um, is, is really difficult if you get trapped down there um, introduction of special weapons of a uh, new one of the Ragnaroks being able to use those um, I think this map just is a lot of fun a lot of great storyline um, Tank Dempsey is definitely my favorite character and so seeing him um, being emotional and, and being able to take his own soul is, is very hard to watch I'm very emotional um, this map storyline and um, Easter egg come together very nicely uh, tie in and integrate um, with the gameplay that you're doing uh, features a boss fight uh, at the end of the Easter egg of fighting the, the keeper um, very difficult boss fight but really fun um, to be able to complete overall a solid map it's at our number three spot so coming in at number two is ancient evil the second dlc for black ops 4 featuring the chaos characters going to the city of delphi uh, this easter egg for this map is by far the best easter egg um, of any call of duty zombie map it has great flow it has great steps um, steps that include the whole team um, with t take your shot uh, such a fun like mini game that you don't have to worry about zombies or other distractions in the map just being able to take some shots play with the amazing wonder weapons the gauntlets um, that are just such a, a great feel and a great time for that map um, i think overall the map plays really well uh, the introduction of the new uh, giant six-armed guys uh, that throw a spear or, or knock you concussed um, are a great addition um, pegasus strike is absolutely one of the best uh, special weapons that we have um, i think it is so fun to watch pegasus come down and strike uh, lightning into all the zombies um, with the ultimate turn of pegasus at the end spoilers alert and him becoming the boss um, at the end is is so tragic but so great for the map and plays into all the emotions with the reveal of medusa at the end and the direction of the story um, by far the best map of the chaos storyline um, and the wonder weapons being able to use four unique um, elements that we haven't seen before and being able to use a charged attack and uh, just a simple attack uh, a great great wonder weapons um, and that has something for everyone um, the shield is also again very unique with a spear that's throwable um, and, and this is why it comes in at our number two spot number one origins origins is a classic map that concluded the black ops 2 season and rejoined the ether characters in one final hurrah this is the very beginning of the black ops 3 storyline where the characters come together to be able to uh, capture their souls and to break the cycle um, this map features the greatest wonder weapons um, with the staves of lightning of thunder of fire and of ice um, great features all upgradable and very fun to use the easter egg is very complex very elaborate and ties in very well with the storyline and what the characters are doing in the game um, it features the one inch punch and uh, the airstrike it just features so many different things and very innovative things it features a traversal system of being able to ride on a tank and be able to get around the map that way it features huge giant robots moving in the map something that we haven't seen before of npcs that interact with the map and make it difficult often to get out of tight situations or or uh, sometimes get stepped on um, i think overall the map just brings so much to um to the zombie community and to the to the overall feel of zombies i think this map has the greatest um greatest time to it um, being able to play this and speed run it's it's great for everyone it has something for every type of zombie player for casual for um, high rounder for easter egg runners um, this map is really the pinnacle of call of duty zombies and that's why it comes in at our number one spot i hope you all enjoyed this video if you do make sure to leave a like and subscribe 
and I'll see you guys in the next one. Welcome home, Columbia. Beautiful, beautiful.